you're pushing against the wall, try to give them nothing. Try to give them nothing. Be perfect coming in. But if you feel something, then you have to do something about it. And then the question, well, then it gets very subtle. You know, like, what did you feel for it? Just now I felt a very slight tension, a slight stiffness in the arms, which I knew I had that. But what I'm doing is I'm giving him an opportunity. And if he doesn't take it, then he gets pushed. If I offer him the opportunity, whether intentionally or unintentionally, he needs to recognize that that's an opportunity and recognize how to take it. Any questions on that? Who was not here last year? A lot of people. So then by giving him the opportunity, you give him the opportunity to center and just sort of see where it is. All right, let me back up. <coughs> Push hands, since so many of you were not here last year, maybe I should have done what we did last year, but right now. Push hands is a two person form. It is not uh, what's known as sansha or free form push hands. It's two per it's a form. So, uh, Rich, if you switch it out. <coughs> when we address in push hands, Let's just level set. When we address and push hands, we start off shoulder width in a 70-30. My foot is, re is related to his foot, my toe aiming at his heel, his toe aiming at my heel. One of us goes into ward off, one of us goes into push. Let's assume, just for the sake of argument, since his back is against the wall, he's gonna go into ward off. Now, when he goes into ward off right away, there's a choice that has to be made. Which arm is going up? Depending upon which arm he chooses to go up, that sets up a configuration. For example, given that he's going to be in the ward off and I'm going to be in the push, we know two things first. First, his weight is forward, my weight is back. If his weight is back or my weight is forward, that is what I call a, a break in the form. There is a, so the form has a certain structure. Any time there is a break in that structure, there is a both an opportunity and a problem. And it's an opportunity and a problem for both people. So it's all relative. You know, who can pick up on the distortion first? Who understands the distortion better? It's not a question of who's stuck and who's not stuck. It, it, because the stuckness is a mutuality. It's a question of who's in the, as to use uh, sort of Taiji terms, the, deep, the more defective position. So, okay, so we square up. Right away we know he's forward, I'm back, therefore I know which is his substantial arm and which is my substantial arm. Which is my substantial arm? Left. Left. Which is his substantial arm? Right. So one thing, thank you Sharon, that always comes out. <laughs> That always comes out is that the substantial arms are always, give me a high five, always on the same side. It's just a little factoid, a little factoid you can find. So if you know where your substantiality is, you know where the other person's substantiality either is or should be. Because you know where it should be, but whether it is there or not depends upon whether they're in good shape or not. Okay. So we know where the substantiality is. We know he's forward, I am back. He puts up an arm. I go into push. Now, one of the things that I we need to do is we have a form. The other arm needs to connect to me, ideally, elbow to elbow, but that's an ideal. He needs to have a connection here. There can't be a gap. Can't be like this, can't be like that. It's gotta be there. A ward off needs to be a good ward off. It needs to have to be in proper space. Proper orientation of wrist and center line. The elbow can't be high. The elbow can't be collapsed. It needs to be a good board. So that's this is just we haven't even started yet. So which is my substantial arm? The left. What am I going to do? With the center. Hmm? Go towards the center. I'm going to feel with my substantial arm the stiffness in here. 
resistance in here, stiffness in here, inattention up here. Like, who's that up there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I probe with a substantial arm. I'm looking for uh, stuckness. What does stuckness feel like? Tension. Yeah. Hardness. 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 If you would. Press on, just press on my wrist. Press on. Yeah, press on. See that? No resistance, right? Now press on. See? So what you're looking for, you're looking for more than four ounces. When you start to feel more than four ounces build up, you know that there's a situation of stuckness. Keep in mind that stuckness is complementary. It can work both ways. Well, for example, I'd be pushing you with the and I'd go like this. Look at him. Whose hands are those? Whose hands are those? <laughs> I think they're mine, but I guess they're not. So remember, stuckness is complementary. 